Hello, my name is Charmin and I have a little beach combing YouTube channel called SWF Beach Life. Now, normally I'm out on the beach looking for seashells and sometimes these seashells may need a little bit of extra loving care when you get them home. And by that, I do mean cleaning. Well, as you can imagine, I'm out there a lot picking up a lot of seashells. So I'm very interested in the best way to clean these seashells. And I have found something brand that is not only awesome and totally works but it's also safe so I'm not just gonna tell you about it I'm gonna show you let's get into it Okay, so once I get these seashells home, that's when I can start thinking about how I'm gonna clean them. And it really depends on the kind of shell and the kind of crud on the process that I go, um, go about as far as cleaning. So the first step is I'm, every, all of these are gonna go in bleach. So this one, I'm super excited to see what's gonna happen with acid, but I am gonna put that in bleach first just to really kind of loosen up anything that might come off with the bleach. This, I assume that all this black is gonna come off and so I'm just going to be left with this horse conch. You don't have to remove that black stuff. If you like that, by all means, go ahead and keep that. These alphabet cones, this has got some beach crud on there. That's going in the bleach. This is, I assume that that black periostracum is going to just simply come off. These two paper figs, see all that beach stuff? That should come right off. Two of these Florida cones, they're a little bit crusty super yicky so we're gonna get those into bleach the sunray venus clam um i just love the way these look hopefully this one will do what i hope it's gonna do maybe i'll grab another just to make sure um but the periostrum come periostrum comes off oh look i happen to have an extra yeah an extra sunray venus clam so we'll put this in there too um they come out pink and sh oh they're just so pretty so i want to do two of those we have an albino frickly um albino Florida prickly cockle. So we're going to put that in bleach. And then we have some apple murex. We have a lace murex. And then we have these fighting cock. So all I'm going to do at this point is get these into the bleach. And then we're going to see what that looks like after. The next step will be acid. But let's just let these soak for about a day and let's see how they come out. The bleach that I like to use is from Walmart. It is a low splash bleach it feels like it's a little more i like it's this more concentrated yeah it happens to be lavender great but it's really this more concentrated one i feel like it's thicker and i just like the way it works so this is the bleach that i like to use and again you can just get that at your local walmart okay so these are fresh out of the bleach um you're not gonna be, really be able to tell the color because they're still a little wet so I wanted to show you this though. So this in theory is pretty loose, this white stuff, and I'm gonna spend a minute picking it off. So I'm gonna take care of that in just a second, but look. And again, we're not gonna know, a little flaky thing there, we're not gonna really know the color until these dry. So I'm gonna set these out, I'm gonna let these dry, I'm gonna spend a minute picking off some of that beach stuff. Let's see, is there any, oh yeah, there's some beach stuff here too. So I'm gonna spend a minute picking off some of that stuff and then we can take a look and see how these all came out. Okay, so I have been using this. It depends, either one, it's a dental pick I picked up on Amazon um, and it did wonders on the alphabet cone. So this had that stuff on, it's no more stuff. It's got, well, I see, see that little white thing, that's eh, fine. So, you know, I could soak it again, but for all intent and purposes, this guy is done. Now, I had more trouble with the paper fig this beach stuff i was able to pick a little bit off but at this point i run the risk of either pushing a hole through the shell itself um and i cannot really get underneath that beach stuff so i'm gonna soak these again we'll see what happens we'll circle back to these but in the meantime i'm gonna i want to put those back in the bleach to soak i'm gonna let the the rest of these dry because now i'm excited to talk about um, stage two, which is the acid. So we'll come back to these once they're all dry. 
Okay, I'm getting impatient while I'm waiting for these shells to dry. So let's talk about why. Why am I waiting for the shells to dry? Look at the color of the, see how chalky that is? So this is calcium that's just kind of deposited on the outside of the shell. And the next step is to burn that off. That's gonna come off, I'm gonna dip that in water so I can tell that that color is gonna come off. So that's a real easy way to tell for if your seashells, if the cal if dipping it in acid is going to work. If you get your shell wet and you can see that color through it, that means that you do have that layer of white on it and you will be able to burn that off. So that is what we're gonna do in the next step. So if, if it's in question, go ahead and put some, um, get it wet. This one, for example, I don't actually think this is going to be worth dipping. So I'm just going to put it in water. Yep. So nothing's going to happen to that. So I'm just, I'm not going to bother. This is the end of the road for this guy. You are as good as you're going to get. All right. So I will try to be patient. Let these finish drying so that we can go ahead on to the next step. Okay. These shells are now dry. Yay. Look at how beautiful. So I had wanted to remove the periostracum and that's what the bleach will do. It will remove the periostracum from that shell that we found in Sanibel. This out I got from Allie from SWFL Shell Guide. I did not find this because you would have heard me hollering and hooting. Um, she collects her shells at the end of her tours and people get to grab them. I couldn't resist. So I technically didn't find it, but it's gonna be added to my collection. So something like this, I probably would want to dip further. So that's what I'm doing. Now that they've been bleached, step one, what is done? This is done, it's gorgeous. This is done. My prickly cockle, it again, it removed all that periostracum. Those, are, these are done. This is done. So you see what the um, bleach does is it removes that periostracum and it makes, some people may hate it. May, you might think that it's like ruining the shell. I happen to love them like this. So they're done in my humble opinion. So the rest of these, this one's done. This I did find. So now that the periostracum is off, this is albinistic. Mm, so pretty. Okay, so that's done as well. And then we've already determined that this is not, nothing's gonna happen to that. So I'm not, I'm gonna consider it done. And then this is, this is also done. I don't dip anything shiny in acid because it makes it matte. So you see how this shell has zero shine? Not because it was dipped in acid, it just doesn't have that shine. So if a shell has a natural shine, I don't dip it in acid, just how I roll. But these murex shells here this crown the let's see this oh you know what it's got a little bit of shine and i can probably just scrape off the rest of that so i'm going to be done with this one as well the cone kind of like that so the florida cones i'm going to leave this one alone that one's done this one i'm going to dip so these are the shells that we're gonna dip and you're just gonna see the difference between the before and after. Now, what am I gonna use? We finally, I'm using Acid Magic. I bought this at Amazon. So you can simply go to Amazon. I'm gonna put a link in the description box below so that you can purchase this. The, it is so economical. I am very, very excited to show this to you. Now, the only question I have at this point is whether I should use it at full strength or whether I should dilute it. So I'm gonna try it first at full strength. This says that it is a one-to-one -one replacement for muriatic acid. Muriatic acid, when I use it, I do dilute it. So I'm going, to I'm going to find a test shell and I'm going to use this acid, acid magic at 100% strength and kind of see what happens. It's going to allow me to kind of gauge if I do want to dilute it further and we'll just kind of see what happens. I got plenty of shells. So let's start with 100%, uh, yeah, 100% strength acid magic. Now I'm going on some assumptions here. I'm assuming that you know that muriatic acid it's acid, it will burn your skin. It is not to be messed around with. There are fumes involved. It works fabulous and I'll probably still continue to use it, but I love having the option of using something 100% safe. So this is 100% of the acid magic. Now, um, I am wearing safety goggles. I'm wearing safety goggles. You only get one, one pair of peepers, people. So make sure that you always protect your eyes. Um, I'm not wearing gloves because I'm not going to get burned by the acid magic. It's amazing. So 
I, I, I'm not going to mess around with muriatic acid. I've done plenty of videos with those. By all means, go and check out one of those videos if you're curious about the muriatic acid. But let's talk about this acid magic and how this works. So I'm going to wear tongs, use tongs. I actually don't have to. And I'll show you that in a minute. But let's just see how this works to start. So I'm going to take a test shell. I found these three. These are my three test shells here. So I'm going to grab this apple murex and put it in the 100%. For me, I'm looking to see how violent is this bubbling going to be. Um, so is it something I'm going to want to dilute with water? But let's see how it goes. So here in the one, two, three, quick, get that out. I see a little bit of fuming. I'm outside anyway. So and then it goes into the water. This is just water. I'm going to kind of wait and see how it goes. I do have the baking soda at the ready. Um, should I want to see Mm -hmm. So that's what the acid does. It removes that acid magic, removes that outer layer. Now, again, it's hard to see it because it's wet and any kind of even water will make that shell kind of color come out. So we're going to have to let it dry. So in the meantime, let's let's go ahead and I mean, I, I'm just for for me, for testing purposes, I didn't think it was that quote unquote violent of a bubble. So I may use this stuff at 100 percent strength. into the water so the water stops that burning process and there's our lightning well it's got it, the acid I, uh -huh, will not remove that stuff that is a job for bleach we are really just looking at the color though again the test shell so we'll leave that there and then this one this lace murex we're gonna again i'm looking really kind of looking for that reaction all right it's not so bad it's doing some bubbling you can see there's some stuff going on but what it's doing is it's burning that outer layer off. Now, what is so cool about the safe stuff is that it doesn't burn your skin. And I did this in the last video, but I had my ring on. So I'm just gonna hold it lightly and I'm gonna put it in the acid. So this stuff will not harm your skin. So it goes in. If you had um, like a paper cut or something, it might feel like you got lemon juice on that, on that cut. So there is the acid magic on that. And uh, just because I can, I'll just go ahead and do it one more time. It does, I be on it, it feels a little weird. I'm not trying to shock you. I'm just trying to show you. It literally is that safe. So I'm gonna hold this shell and clean it. Not my rings, just, just, my, just my skin into the, water again i'll kind of see how it goes the water's staying pretty clean i only cleaned a couple shells at this point gorgeous so that is going to dry beautiful and i'm going to kind of keep going although i'm going to go ahead and pick up you know this is a little bit small um for this i at least i really was only using this to determine that i was going to use the product at 100 strength so i have this cool oops whoopsie uh, this mason jar this is what i'm going to store the stuff in because i'm going to put the acid magic into this container and then i'm just going to leave it in here and use it over and over until it stops working in which case i will dispose of it and we're going to talk about that in a minute so let me just do a little transferring let me get the acid magic into this bigger container so i can continue to dip some seashells all right we've got the mixture in this bigger container i cannot wait cleaning seashells I love it. I do. I love seeing something like this. And I just know that with a little bit of love and care, it's going to be absolutely stunning. So take this into the safe acid. Again, same stuff. I could use my hands, but I'm just not going to. I'm going to put that seashell in there. I actually lost hold of it. Oh, dear. I can't see a thing. It's bubbling. Now, if I really needed to, I could stick my hand in there. So again, I know we have to let that dry. Big difference, huh? I know, I, yeah, the first time I was freaking out, it was like magic, it was awesome. All right, so this crown, it's a little, you know, it's a little dry. It's gonna look better for sure. Let's just see how better. Do the bubbling, I managed to hold on to it this time. Excellent. Oh yeah, see the color? That's what I'm talking about. 
it's just, it's, it's so fun. Okay, let's do this Murex. Murexes are fun. Actually, Murexes are really fun, and so are lightning walks. All right, Murex. There you go. I still have it. Swish it around a little. Into the bucket. How's the bucket doing? Bucket's okay. Bucket's all right. I'm just looking to see if there's like residue, if I should think about putting some of that baking soda in. So I know it's gonna look beautiful because it's still wet. So I'll go ahead and dip this cone real quick. Into the water. And this, this little cone, we'll see that it's a little dry. It doesn't have too much white stuff. It's got a little bit, a little bit of white stuff. Look at that calcium. And then lastly, let's do this lace mirrors. Awesome. Awesome. All right, so what I think at this point I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let these guys dry. Um, I have a whole bunch, I got a whole bunch. I'm gonna also dip all of these. So I'm just gonna go ahead and have some fun dipping some of those seashells while these dry. And I'll tape some, I'll give you some so you can see some of that. It's like, it's so satisfying. you this one because it's just going to come out so good this nutmeg i'm going to keep track of this one too see how white that is it's like magic all right i'm going to keep dipping Oh, I haven't seen this shell in a while. This is my lion's paw from Juno Beach when I found all of those Imperial Venus clams. I honestly don't think all that much is gonna happen by me dipping this in acid. I've already done the bleach thing, that so that color isn't gonna help. I'm just gonna try to know, bring out whatever color I can. So we get that in there. Mm. Yeah, I think I have a gray lion paw. It's just kind of the way it's going to be. Well, you can see a little bit of what was under it, a little bit of that, that orange there. So that's it. That's as good as my lion paw is going to get. All right, I'm going to keep dipping. So the sun destroys everything. I, I didn't know how powerful UV can be, and my bucket died. It got a crack. So I've had to go and just go ahead and grab another bucket. No big deal. I did notice the bucket water. It didn't really get like that foamy the way it did the last time I did this, but I just kind of changed it a little more regularly. I've dipped these so far. I did, well, I kind of had to change the water because my bucket died. And I'm gonna continue to use the exact same uh, acid magic. Um, and just to give you an idea on how, you know, how much, how many shells this amount of liquid will uh, clean. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and keep dipping. I'm going to show you a couple ones because some of them are really good. Like these two. We have this little nutmeg is probably going to be pretty good. And that. So I'm going to do these next. Okay, I'm going to grab this little nutmeg. Get a good hold of that shell. Get it in there. That bubble a hot second. Didn't really have a substantial coating on it. So that is probably going to be pretty pretty outstanding. I'm gonna, we'll come back and, and check on that. And then this little tulip, it's got that white. I'm gonna squeeze that pretty hard. Into the water. Mm-hmm. So we'll wait till those dry and then we'll, we'll take a peek at those in a few. Okay, I moved to the ground because my arm was getting tired. And I do notice that um, there is some stuff kind of floating on top of it. So I probably would just recommend changing the rinse water a little bit more than usual. I, is it doing anything bad? I don't know, but just erring on the side of caution. It's only water. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this rinse water again. 
Okay, these shells are now finally dry and we can really take a look at what's going on here. So I, yeah, I love it. This is my new go-to acid, this acid magic. It's, it works fabulous. Um, you saw how much I used that much. Yeah, it just colored a little bit. That's the, what it's, the color started out. Here's the color it is now. I've managed to dip all of those shells plus these shells. It totally works, totally safe. It does exactly what I was hoping it to be. And it is a, it's pretty darn economical if you ask me. So I did see this at our Ace Hardware for less than I saw it on Amazon. So I'm just, Google it, Google shop your acid magic and see where you can find that. Um, again, if you want to just get it from Amazon, I'm offering you a link below. I'll get probably, I don't know, seven cents for every bottle you order, but something's better than nothing, right? So that's my new go-to acid. I love it. And just take a look at those. Yep, here's those two nutmegs and that little, it works fabulous, absolutely fabulous. So yeah, super happy with this. So I'm going to continue to use this until it's dead, till it stops working. And then I'm just going to go ahead and um, replace it with new stuff. So when I'm ready to dispose of this, the first thing I'm going to do is find an old shell, anything. Not, not this quahog because this quahog is pretty awesome. Oh, I really should dip that. Anyway, I would take an old shell and I would pop it in that acid and I would just let it bubble and, and react until it stops reacting. So I'm trying to deplete it from any of the bad things that are in there. Once that stops bubbling, then I'm going to mix that with as much water as I possibly can. Find the biggest vessel you can find, like that bucket I used earlier. Then I'm going to mix this with, after it's bubbling with the shell, I mix it with water. And then I add baking soda until that mixture completely stops reacting. Once that's done, then I will dump that somewhere in my yard where I do not plan on growing anything. That's how I roll. So that's, that's my recommendation. So guys, if something else comes about, if I find a new way to clean, find, polish anything to seashells, I will be sure to let you know. But for now, I got a new safe acid, acid magic, you rock. All right, guys, I'll see you out there on the beach. Okay, quickly, before I go, I wanted to show you that the bottom of this true tulip, even though it's been dipped in acid, is still shiny. So that's that's kind of wild. I would expect that to not have any shine on it, but yet it does. Hmm, I'll, I'll pay attention to that in the future. And then I'm gonna spend a second, I managed to get a little bit more of that beach stuff off this paper fig, so I'm just gonna spend a second and then just let you know, you know is it worth it You know, holding on to these kind of shells with this much stuff on them? Conclusion, it's just not worth it. I, I cannot get that beach stuff off. I did think that the bleach would remove it, but it's just not. So on these more delicate shells, like the paper figs, if you're gonna find a whole lot of beach stuff on it, if it looks okay like this, by all means, I would say collect that. But if it's gonna bother you, eh, maybe leave it at the beach because that stuff ain't coming off. All right, guys, that's it. I'll keep the shell tips coming. <laughs>